Greetings. Welcome to Growth Hacking Show, where we have founders, CEOs, serial entrepreneurs, and many creative people who have built their business not one time, probably many times into many, many niches. And some of them, I call them a genius. In fact, I don't have to call them. They, their own company names are genius. And my company is JV Genius too. So imagine when the two genius square meet each other. So there's a lot of uh, things common. And plus, to be successful in a business, there are many things you have to do and many hats you have to wear. One thing is common. You have to create a lot of content that has to tell your story and communicate with your prospects and leads and whatever you call them and suspect, in fact, even because your advertising is also the same. And then you're creating funnels to actually send them emails after meal, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Guess what? All of your target, your prospects and clients, they're getting being bombarded by big company like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and you little guy like me and you. How you actually stand out yourself where you actually personalize your content, just like you have written a specific email. We are not talking about like a high and then the first name, ignore that one. Imagine that creating a video for each one of your personal email. You're personalizing your content video on almost an automation. Of course, it looks very simple. You might be thinking how that's possible. Yes, my guest has done that, not only for himself, for tons of tons of his clients. He is the, according to me, he may not agree with me. I may even offend him publicly on this interview. He is the master of a content. And I will call him a content machine from now onward. And you can take that uh, <laughs> if you like to. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. In case you don't know me, my name is Mohammed Siddiq. I'm the host of a growth hacking show and the co-author of New Success Secrets available on Amazon. Please join me to give a warm welcome to Campaign Genius. He is the real genius, I can tell you. My, you know, Matthew Dunn from Washington, uh, you know, and he has been involved in as a serial entrepreneur. Mostly everything is around content and multiple names. You can read his LinkedIn profile. I'm not going to give you the whole, this is the way why you want to con connect with him. Anything to do with the content, how to actually increase your conversions, to how to personalize in a way where it actually drive you the ROI and the results for you. Matthew Dunn is the man. And without any further delay, please join me to give a warm welcome to Matthew Dunn. Matthew, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Let me start with this. Where were you, what happened, who you were surrounded with that inspired you to get into content creation? Because many people think it's boring. What? No. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, my first career before technology was in theater, which is a really strange background to bring to tech. But I, uh, I thought that this technology stuff would change the world and I moved across the country in a truck and changed careers. And I was sitting in a cubicle at Microsoft 1989 and looking through the Chronicle of Higher Ed and I saw a listing for a book called The Visual Display of Quantitative Information by Edward Tufte and I said sounds interesting so I asked the library to get it which they would do back in those days the Microsoft library and I read it and it was sort of my interest in technology and uh, and data clicking together with uh, the story and content interest from theater and I said you know what this, this is going to change the world when we start marrying these two things together. This is 1989. No one was doing it yet. But I said, I, I think those two things are going to converge. The content infrastructure that we started to build on digital and what we need as human beings, which is things to, stories to listen to, things to read, things to entertain us, and so on. And I think that's arguably coming true. Wonderful, Matthew. While I was reading your LinkedIn profile, you, you say where you have seen, may have seen me over 180,000 videos and your content has been featured in Money, CIO Magazine and on and all. And you are a great speaker, award-winning writer and everything. 180,000 videos. What is going on here? <laughs> That's actually a good example of both the problem and the opportunity. Like that, that, that number is the number of uh, videos we've created multiple multiplied by the number of times that we've uh, branded some set of those 
for a specific client so that they'd have a library of stuff to share. Um, the reason seizing on that number intrigues me is this. I think you'd agree, your business would agree, that we're not in the broadcast era anymore, right? Here you are, you've teed up a show, you've got viewers, you didn't have to ask for permission, you didn't have to go to NBC or CBS to broadcast your signal, you're just doing it, right? But the scarcity is attention, not content. How do you get people to watch what you've done? So we can, we can deploy um, 100,000 copies of hundreds and hundreds of videos without worrying that someone's gonna say, I saw the same thing twice. They're just not likely to do it and they won't remember, remember it if they did. So we've got this perfect copying machine called digital. Why not apply that to content? Yes, definitely. And also you say on your LinkedIn profile, there's, by doing the personalized videos and through the you know, email marketing, you can 10x your results? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Tell um, us. Same, it's really the same working thesis. The, the, George Gilder said there, there's, there's two things we're not going to change, the speed of light and the span of life. Right? And if the span of life isn't going to change, I know it's going up, but not by much. And you and I only have about as much time and attention as our grandfathers did. Well, we've got thousands of times more stuff vying for our attention. The stuff that's more relevant, more interesting, more about us, more hooked into things already in our brain. It's just a more efficient communication. So we're going to pay attention to it more and faster. And if you look at all of the studies on email personalization, which I think I quote in that LinkedIn profile, um, for sure, if you provide content that's more related to the guy looking at it, more relevant, more timely, and more visual, my thesis, then he's a lot more likely to look at it. Of course, no doubt about that one. So Matthew, based on your experience of working on your business and working with many clients for a long time as a serial entrepreneur, what are the top three missteps to avoid to, for a business growth? For business growth. So... Missteps for someone running a business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, number one, underestimating, ignoring uh, people issues. Uh, I know everyone's running scared that, that the Terminator's going to show up and take over jobs. Baloney. People will still be the integral part of making any complex thing run. And if you ignore the human issues, those are real human beings you're working with, you ignore them at your peril. Um, Second one, which is closely related, I guess, is, is what I call ducking the painful conversations. Um, where, I don't know, you, you, may have, you may have perspective on this. I, I feel like Americans are not good at having harder conversations. We're, we're, we'll, we'll avoid doing that. But when you're talking about managing a team or making a business operate, if something's not working and you don't have the uh, gumption to have that personal pers person to person, painful conversation, you're making a mistake, even if it's firing someone. And by the way, usually painful conversations, both sides expect it. Both sides knew it was coming. And it's up to you as a leader to step in and actually initiate the conversation. Um, and the third one, I guess I'd say is being impatient. Making a business work is super hard and it takes a lot longer than you think it did. <laughs> it doesn't always work even when you want it to. So if you, you see these hackathons uh, on the headlines now, you know, I spent 48 hours locked in with my buddies and we came up with this great, it's not a business, right? Just because it's a piece of working code doesn't mean someone values it, someone's gonna pay for it, someone's gonna be a customer, help you improve it. Those are two very, very different things. So cool, cool down, <laughs> be patient. It takes time and a lot more persistence than you think. So be patient. So keep watching this because there's a lot more to come. So great. Now let's switch the side on the table. So on the other side, what are your top three success secrets of your business growth? How you have grown? Top three. Don't be stingy. Give it away. Stop. Stop. Okay. Top three. Uh, number one, and I am living proof of this. You can learn the technical stuff. I was an actor director who hopped in a pickup truck and moved across the country and said, I'm going to go into technology. I had absolutely no background to do it. And you have the world's greatest learning resource ever, the web, right at your fingertips. If you don't learn the technical stuff, 
you will not understand the landscape your business is operating on. And I'm not saying you have to stop being the CEO or CMO or whatever and, and become a JavaScript coder. I am saying that you need to understand enough of the dynamics of technology to be able to uh, debabilize and make, make rational decisions. Have a feel for the landscape, so to speak. So that's one. You, you can learn the technical stuff. Two, big one, block your calendar. Um, say it visually, our sort of parent corporation that we run used to have a lot of Fortune 100 size clients when we were doing explainer videos, you know, Verizon, Amazon, into a companies like that. We figured out quite quickly that the bigger the company, the less time anyone from that company had to actually focus on a task and make an intelligent decision about something. It, it's, it's almost ridiculous how interrupt driven people are. Um, and we'd say to them, you're basically paying us because we can spend four hours or eight hours or 20 hours concentrating on doing this well, and you can't. And they pretty much chuckle and say that's true. So <laughs> what are you losing in the equation if you're constantly packed with emails, alarms going off, got a jump, got another meeting, oops, got a conference call, et cetera, and an hour or two of concentrated thought isn't available to you, you're missing your greatest resource. So I actually block my calendar uh, pretty much every morning, five days a week. So the calendar says, Matthew's busy, Matthew's tied up. And I don't generally take meetings and phone calls during that time because I can concentrate and get stuff done and use my noggin instead of just reacting to everyone else's agenda. Um, and the third one, which is near and dear to my heart, um, it's about communication, but it's about communication and visual. The more, top, the more complex a topic is, the more ambiguous it is the harder it is to actually get a common understanding among a set of people trying to accomplish something. If they don't have a common understanding and they're shooting off in different directions, you're, not get, you're really not gonna get the thing done well. You're gonna waste a bunch of your time and energy and money and resources pulling in different directions because you don't have the same understanding of what you're doing. So ironically, invest the time in simplifying and invest the time in communicating and draw a picture. <laughs> if you can disambiguate and get a really common picture in people's heads, your organization will be a whole lot more effective at acting together in concert to achieve something. I ran across, uh, you, should, you should invite this guy, Siddiqui, on, on the show. Look, find a guy named Simon Wardley. He's invented this thing called the Wardley Map, which is a beautiful, brilliant strategy uh, technique for mapping business strategy in a visible way so you're actually looking at a picture and really getting on the same page so my tip number three simplify and draw a picture the more complex the situation is the more incredibly important it is to have a common view and i mean literally see things the same way amazing if you if you want me to pick one i will say block your calendar that's the key but time for yourself so you can have a creative time for you. Talk to yourself, inner you. So yeah. that's the only way. So yeah. thank you so much. So Matthew, how are you growing your business right now in this economy? Woo. Uh, we're concentrating on growing Campaign Genius, which you mentioned. Um, and it's a, it's a new service and we're invading a market that we don't necessarily know much uh, about. So um, we're doing a couple things. One, we're, we're trying to get to know the, the people who are in that market. You know, email marketing is sort of a cross horizontal across uh, almost every industry, but there are a ton of very talented, very smart people who've done a lot of things <clears throat> as email marketers for years. So we're, we've got a, an advisor who's from that world who's telling us what to look at and who we should connect with. We're attending conferences participating in online groups, investing time in really trying to understand that landscape. Um, in terms of taking that into business development, um, we're working to build a fairly methodical one-to-one -one biz dev process for Campaign Genius. We just think that's the right, uh, right fit for that service. Uh, there's a fantastic book called Client Machine by George Athan. You should, you should get George on the show, by the way. He's wonderful. Um, and we're built working through that process and actually 
I'm spending a whole bunch of time every week in a course taught by George to adopt his methodology to biz dev for, uh, for campaign genius. LinkedIn, by the way, is quite, uh, quite pivotal. And I think that's how we initially connected was on yeah. LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is, a uh, is becoming an increasingly important, uh, lead and relationship source, uh, for developing campaign genius as a business. Great, great. Thank you so much. So as a being a serial entrepreneur working on many things, uh, you know, so you probably wear so many hats. However, in that whole life cycle, you know, it's a roller coaster. Some time is up and some time is way down than we expect. Yep. yep. So Matthew, here is my question. What keeps you going when you are in down moments? That's a really good question. Um, I'm incredibly disciplined. <clears throat> so even if I'm feeling down, I'm still in the office doing what I need to get done. Um, and it doesn't mean I don't wake up at night and go, oh man, is this gonna work? But I still get up in the morning and go do it. Um, even when there's no one around to tell me to go do it. I don't, that's not really a good <clears throat> answer to your question because it's kind of, a, it's like a sidestep, right? Like, oh, I, I don't need anything. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, I'm stubborn, I'm determined, um, I'm disciplined. <laughs> And you don't get the thing built if you don't show up. Bill Gates said, was it 90% of success? Yeah. Going up, right? Yeah. Okay. So, well, for starters, show up. Don't whine about it. Go sit down and do whatever work has to be done to move the thing forward a little bit um, every day. Um, I, I, I'd like to say I spend more time doing things like journaling and uh working on intention and stuff like that. And I, and I, I probably should, but I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm here at the desk working on the business um, instead pretty much every day. And PS, you'll never see me here on Sunday. Okay. Because Great. I'll be with my kids, my wife, my friends, and I'm not going to do this thing to the point where it takes, you know, it takes life over. You have to be just as disciplined about your other priorities. And in my case, they're much higher priorities than business. Wonderful, at least on Sunday. So thank you so much, Matthew. Matthew, how the Growth Hacking Show community, people who are watching this can support you? Well, if you're a growth hacker, you probably use email, right? So for one thing, take a look at campaigngenius.com. Um, I suspect that uh, we could help you do stuff you've never been able to do with email before. Doesn't mean everyone's going to turn into a customer, but uh, I'd love to get opinions, even if they're there, don't do it this way, or you should improve it that way. Um, beyond that, growth hacking's in a funny state. Like growth hackers are the madmen of, of right now. Like the, the techniques that are working uh, to actually get people's attention for business, um, the best ones I think are under that umbrella of growth hacking. If they really are the best, they'll become the mainstream everyone will adopt them. So people who are early in participating in the community for a practice have a opportunity and a responsibility to, to help it become a viable, sustainable mainstream. A huge career opportunity if they do, but leaving, leaving that aside, um, practices that work but leave a trail of, of you know, blood and tears behind them, a burned landscape behind them, aren't a really good idea, even if they're great for the bottom line this way. So, you know, you think of yourself as a pioneer, because truly, if you're a growth hacker, you are, and, and figure out where you actually want to blaze that trail and who's going to follow behind you and what they should find when they get there. Thank you. So I want you to do one thing, <clears throat> two sure. things, one. You're watching this, you go ahead and campaign genius. I showed you the website, try it for free, get a demo and see how that can work for you. And the second thing is also very important. Let me show you this one. Read this content. Remember we are talking about the content machine. He has written this article on LinkedIn free is the word. It starts with, so that way capture this. $35 billion content strategy. Go ahead and watch this video. It's from Coca-Cola. It's a small little company based in Atlanta, Coca-Cola, all <laughs> over the world. So uh, only like this, like uh, it's less than uh, in the TED Talks. <laughs> That's 18 minutes. This is less than TED Talks. 
and read uh, this all the our content strategy is substance a matter of brand engagement you know this read this one you will like the idea of, of connecting with matthew dunn and uh, having a conversation with him let me assure you that part and once you are there reading it go ahead and share it on your own linkedin profile too so that way it helps him it helps you as well and you uh, anything you sharing is caring whatever you learn something from someone go ahead and share it right away i did already so don't cl- complain to me or oh, you didn't share it you're asking me to share it go ahead and share it anyway so matthew as we are about to wrap up what would you say as a final word hmm it's a stressful time i read recently that people around the world are more emotionally stressed than they've ever been by whatever measure I, I, I don't know but I, I think it's fair to say it seems like tough times and at the same time it, it's an amazing time to be alive we all have we all have a bigger lever and more resources than our parents grandparents ancestors dreamed would exist you know we're living in the Jetsons time what, what are you going to do with that and why like that's that that's worth having here when you're busy doing the work and pulling on that great big lever very well said thank you so much for matthew dem matthew dan for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of growth hacking short community and our entire team we really appreciate you this is mohammed sadiq signing off from atlanta georgia wishing you good luck good sales and i do hope our path cross again with another amazing guest until then all best wishes